What's going on, everyone? So, now that we know that LeBron is willing to sacrifice to bring as much talent to this Lakers roster as possible, let's talk about DeMar DeRozan, right? Because there was this kind of like, okay, DeMar makes a lot of sense, but is he really going to take the MLE, right? And it's like, well, you also need D'Lo to leave, and it's the Chicago Bulls, they're looking at giving him 30 to 40 million a year, so he's probably not going to turn down that money to go take the MLE, and it's just like... It was looking very unrealistic for some time. But now, everything's changed, right? Because if LeBron is really committed to, hey, go get a real piece or two, and let's go try to win a championship, then now, DeMar DeRozan becomes a very real option. Because you now would have your mid-level exception, and you could do a sign-in trade. So the Lakers could, if he wasn't willing to take the MLE, could work out some type of sign and trade for maybe 20 million, right? Maybe sign him to a two, three year deal for 40, 60 million, right? Boom. Now you could get him, work out a sign and trade, maybe go get Clay too, just saying, right? Like that could be a that could be a lot of fun. Or, you know, go get some Valanchunas or something like that. But nonetheless, DeMar DeRozan, I would love to have DeMar on this team. Now I know right off the bat, let's get the, the, you know, the elephant in the room out the way. People always point to and go, well, he doesn't shoot threes, right? He can't shoot threes. A couple things about that. One, he takes incredibly deep twos at times, right? I mean, it's like so deep. He's, it might as well be a three. It's like, dude, just take like, you know, a, a little toe behind, right? Like, come on, man. But the other thing too, is that he, there's more to floor spacing than just guys standing out shooting threes, right? Like it's the type of offense and actions in which you create those types of, of advantage points. And DeMar DeRozan is one of the best at capitalizing on said advantages. He's a guy that also would be one of the best, probably three third guys in the league because of his ability to score. He can make the plays, I, he's not a playmaker, but he can make a play. I mean, even Pop with the Spurs had him as like the primary initiator and the primary kind of playmaker for them at times because he can. Again, he's not uh, he's not Chris Paul out there just wheeling and dealing, but he is a guy that can you know set up and initiate the offense, get you in your sets, get you in your actions if need be. But he's also a guy that can just go get a bucket. Right? He's a guy that you can just pass the ball to and just say, "Go, dude." Like, and he would take so much pressure off of Anthony Davis, take so much pressure off of LeBron James. And more than anything, DeMar DeRozan in the last like handful of years has been one of the best closers in the league. I think it was like two years ago. It might be three by now. But like two or three years ago, he was number one in the league in that regards. He's been one of the best uh, fourth quarter players in the league. And he's been one of the best uh, clutch performers in the league. All things that the Lakers could really use because it's basically just been LeBron for the most part. Now, JJ wants um, Anthony Davis to, to kind of be in more actions uh, on the offensive side, in particular down the stretch and in the fourth quarter. But to have DeMar DeRozan as that offensive threat and a guy that you can just put on an island and just say good luck, like... That just adds so much value. And then, again, his ability to stretch the floor. Again, he's take, he's capable of taking these really deep threes or d really deep twos. And he's even said he could kind of step back, and take three, but it's not something that he prefers, right? He, it's just habit for him, right? He just, he's just used to, this is my spot. I'm going to elevate and I'm going to shoot 54% or whatever from those spots. And he's just slicing and dicing and taking the advantage shots for him. And he's one of the best in the business for that. Also, he is one of the best mid-range guys in the league. And when it comes to the playoffs in particular, the mid-range is so valuable because teams and defenses make such a point of defending the paint and closing out hard on the three-point line, which is why usually, as you see, the best teams usually have guys that can hit the mid-range. Right? They have multiple pieces. They, Jason Tatum is a mid-range guy. Right, He loves to get to his little spot, that little elbow even, right, and just operate in that you know 15-foot range. Um, Jalen Brown is a guy that can do that. Uh, Derek White, right? Like You look at all these guys 
on Boston, they all, yes, they can shoot threes, but they also are really good in the mid-range. Same thing with Dallas. You have Luka, who loves, yes, he shoots a lot of threes, but he loves to operate in that little mid-range area. Kyrie, same thing, loves to kind of operate in that little mid-range, in that little pull-up area. Right? You look at all the teams, go through history, and look at all the teams that have had success and have gone to the postseason. They all have guys that can shoot and operate in the mid-range. Why? Because the mid-range is so important. Over-the-top shooting is so important, right? Especially when defenses tighten up and things get tight. Having a guy that can shoot over the top, make difficult shots, be a closer down the stretch. I mean, there's very few that are better than DeMar DeRozan. And yes, his age is a bit of a concern, right? It's like, oh, he's 35, but he's been super reliable. I mean, the guy is basically a lock for 75 plus games a season. And He's, his skill set isn't predicated on like his athleticism, right? He's not he's not this super athlete to where it's like, oh man, once his man, once his athleticism declines, that's it. He's he's done. No, he he's not. Like his entire game is based on skill and being able to get to point A, point B, point C, and taking advantage of that. You could run so many sets and so many actions with uh, DeMar DeRozan that you could run with very few people, right? The pick and pop action with him would just be tremendous. Uh, his ability to catch and shoot, his ability to play off ball, because he's played off ball at pretty much everywhere he's been, right? Like, and then his ability to, again, go and just go get a bucket, but also make a play uh, on occasion for others. And it would just be such a luxury to have a guy like him to where you see, like, offenses get stagnant. And even the Lakers, like, that was a big problem, like, even in the, the Denver series, right? It's like, we'd be torching Denver, getting whatever we want on the offensive side, and then we just hit this wall, and we just could not score to save our lives, right? It would be so nice to have a guy in DeMar DeRozan that you could just isolate and just have him go get, hey, dude, like, we haven't scored in, like, two minutes, dude. Go get a bucket. And he has the skills and ability to just go get a bucket, right? He has the skills and ability to knock down the shots. Like, I just think he would be, because he's realistic, right? He's obtainable. And we may even be able to get him for the mid-level exception. Because if, if Chicago doesn't bite on a contract, which doesn't make any sense for Chicago now, especially since they're looking to rebuild, clearly, and they just re-signed Patrick Williams, right? Like, so you look at the situation, it's like, Chicago makes zero sense to re-sign DeMar DeRozan, right? Like, you're looking to try to trade Zach Levine, which you might not even be able to do, but even then you have Colby White, right? Like, you're trying to get your young guys some opportunity. If they let DeMar go, what team is paying him 20 plus million, right? Could a team maybe give him money as like a placeholder, you know, to just like, ah, hey, you know what? You know, the, the JJ Reddick rule, right? Or, you know, like what you saw Indiana do with Bruce Brown. Like, hey, we're going to give you, you know, 25 million for a season just to like, you know, be a placeholder. And, you know, we may trade you, um, but if not, then it's okay. Like, okay, maybe, but you also got to keep in mind, a lot like the only teams that really have money either don't have a need for a guy like him, or B, they're all bottom feeding teams. And Cooper Flag is very likely um, the number one pick in this draft, and people are probably going to tank for him, right? Like people are going to be tanking for Flag here, and Demar Derozan would really throw a wrench into that. Right, because he is still very good, and he probably gets you a couple wins that you wouldn't win otherwise. But also, like, if Demar, like, let's say, let's say San Antonio, right? I, they're like, hey, you know what? Like, we'd love to have you vet. You understand the system here. You're all that stuff, right? Demar's also spoke very high of Pop. If he's like, if they're like, hey, we'll we'll give you twenty million to come, like, right? just hang out with us for a year or whatever, and or he could get the mid-level exception like I understand that that's a seven million dollar difference but he's 35 right at like what point do you decide you know what I've made my money it's time to commit to winning right and if he's like if he doesn't want to do that then at that case no go get somebody else right because you want somebody that wants to win you want somebody that wants to be here DeMar DeRozan 
went on like a press tour a couple years ago talking basically he was on Chicago going on a press tour talking about the Lakers and how he thought the deal was done like all he's talked about for years is how bad he's wanted to play for the Lakers and how bad he wants to be a Laker and how he'd love to win a championship with the Lakers and he doesn't have a championship at what point do you commit to winning for the game of basketball at what point do you commit to trying to go get a ring right like obviously again if Chicago's offering him 30 to 40 million then yeah go go get your bag my guy like I, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not gonna knock him for that but if like teams are offering 18 to 20 million and you could go to the Lakers and contend for a championship and actually get a real piece for you know like five to seven million less right that seven million is worth more to you than potentially getting a rain I, I, if that's the case, then fine. Or especially going home. It's like, you have if he didn't talk so much about the Lakers, then I wouldn't feel that way, right? It's like, ah, whatever, right? But like, he talks about the Lakers and going and playing for the Lakers every opportunity he has. Well, it's like, now's your opportunity, my guy. So like, let's do it. Let's make it happen, right? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like the idea of... Adding DeMar DeRozan, do you think, nah, stay away from DeMar DeRozan? Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.